this is Melanie and welcome to Semper Adventure. Today I'm going to talk about the different types of passports that are necessary for Oconus moves. Um, everybody's seen the no fee passport word around the Facebook groups, but what does it actually mean? How do you get one? And what's the difference between a no fee passport and a leisure passport? Um, for us, the no fee passport was probably the easiest of all of our processes we've been through yet um, on our move to Okinawa. We have a great passport office over here on Buckley and the process was seamless and quick. But what I'm understanding is that this is not the case at a lot of bases. So I just wanted to give the information that we got about us getting our passports and pass it along to everyone else. First of all, how do you know if you need a no fee passport? It should be stated in your orders and it should have the names of the dependents that it's required for. For service members, they actually don't need no fee passports. They just use their cap card as well as a copy of the orders and they can um, come and go from the country on official um, TAD orders or on PCS orders um, with just their cap card. Uh, sometimes service members will need it for their duty and that will be stated on their orders as well. However, the State Department can and will deny you, uh, the service member the no-fee passports if they deem that it's not necessary. Uh, this did happen to us. We went to the office, did all the paperwork. My husband gave his um, expired official passport and um, they actually still denied him to get a new passport but we're told that once he gets to Okinawa that um, they can actually do that at that time as well instead of doing it beforehand. Now if it says on your orders that you need um, the no fee passport then you'll need to contact your nearest base. Um, if you don't know how to find the passport office Typically, you can call the Deer's office and they will direct you there or combat cam because a lot of times they'll do the photos so they're familiar with it. But the passport office is kind of not as known as a lot of the other offices on base. They may be in their own building um, next to something that's totally not related to them or they could be with um, the Deer's office where they do the dependent IDs and the cap cards. Also, in each country is dependent on whether or not they need um, that no fee passport and it is located in the IAW foreign clearance guide. So that is um, how you will find out if you do need it, if it's not on your orders, but when they prepare the orders, um, you should have that. If you do not have orders yet and you are still trying to get your passport because you know the orders are coming, sometimes um, different branches are slower with those orders, those um, hard or orders. Um, you can actually get an, a memorandum in lieu of orders and have your commanding officer um, write that. Um, the passport offices usually have a sample memorandum that you can just fill in the blanks for and then bring to their office once it's been signed. So if you do not have orders, don't fret. Ask for that memorandum instead and then um, you can be on your way to getting that no fee passport. So what is that no fee passport and what does it do for your family? So um, in a country like Japan, currently you are not able to travel there on leisure. So you do need this no fee passport to even get into the country. But here is um, an example of a leisure passport and a no fee passport. They look exactly the same, except on page 26 of the no fee passport, it says, this passport is valid only for the use in connection with the bearer's residence abroad as a member of the family of a member of the American Armed Forces on active duty outside the United States. Now, if you try to use this passport when you're on your leisure trip and you're trying to get in and out of the country and the officials flip to that page and it says that it's only for official travel, then they can deny you entry to their country. Um, because typically when you're traveling with this, you should have a copy of your orders with you so that they match. Um, if you're going to Japan, they're not going to let you in Japan without the orders and your no fee passport. Um, if you are traveling leisure, you definitely need that leisure passport and that is up to you to get that. Um, another reason for this no fee passport I've heard is that um, 
if they need to evacuate you out of the country faster, the people with no fee passports are going to get out of that country before the people with leisure passports. So it's just something that's necessary. Um, you know, before COVID, it probably wasn't as big of an issue because you could come and go with your leisure passport, but of course you have visas and things like that, and they range for different, dis different times. So um, that no fee passport is important to the military families as they are coming and going from the country in which they reside in. Um, and that leisure passport, you know, you don't wanna go to Japan and not travel around Asia and you will need that um, leisure passport to get around the various different countries in Asia or back to the United States if you wanna visit family. Um, you will need that passport to visit anywhere in the world. So make sure you have both your leisure and your no fee passports when you're traveling on OCONUS orders. Now, the process to get that no fee passport um, is a little bit different if you've had a passport before, even if it has expired, or if you have a brand new one. The first thing you should know is the, that you should get your no fee passport before you get your leisure passport. And the reason I say this is because the no fee passports are taken a couple weeks and the leisure passports are taking up to 10 to 12 weeks at this time due to COVID, um, people you know, getting back into traveling and renewing their passports, that sort of thing. So it can take a lot longer to get that leisure passport. And chances are, if you're moving, you're not gonna be traveling immediately after you get there. So you'll need that um, no fee passport to get in the country. And then you, can, you have a couple options of what you should do for your leisure passport, if you have your PO box, um, I'm unsure if they can send uh, passports to PO boxes, but your other options are to actually send your leisure passport to a family member and have them mail it to your PO box um, or a PO box FPO once you get um, to the next duty station if it's not gonna be in in time. So go ahead and get that no fee passport first because you don't wanna hold up your move by not having your no fee passport it takes less time they do need original birth certificates um, as well as your original um, leisure passport if you have one whether or not it's um, expired or it's active uh, you will need to bring that this next part i will be reading off of a piece of paper to make sure that i get that information to you correctly um, it's so much information that for me to remember it, it would be impossible. So these are the things that you're going to need to bring to your passport um, application interview on base. The first thing is you're going to need your passport application. That's either the DS-11 or the DS-82. The 11 is for a new passport. The 82 is for re a passport if you've already had one. So it's essentially a renewal, even though this is a new no fee passport. It is essentially a renewal because the processes um, that they do to create this new passport is very similar to the renewal process. Um, you'll also need to bring two passport photos. You can get those done at Combat Cam usually for free. If not, then you can get them done at places like Walgreens or Costco, places like that, that you can get them printed pretty much the day of. Um, this is not something that is refunded to you, so just keep that in mind if you have a large family like we do. We spent $60 getting ours, but it was necessary and it's part of the process of moving and when you're getting that um, DLA, the dislo dislocation allowance, then you, know, you can consider that as part of that um, as it is a necessary part of the move. Other things you will need is um, your citizenship evidence and that's gonna be an original birth certificate. It cannot be a copy. Um, it can be a reissued, but it needs to be the original one with the seal on it, as well as a original marriage license that goes with the orders and social security cards. If you have your prior passport, you will need that too, whether or not it's expired, you will need that um, as long as it's less than 15 years old. You'll need a statement of consent form for minors under the age of 16. It needs to be notarized. If your children are going and there is a custody agreement, um, the other parent needs to um, notarize and sign that. So that is important to know, depending on if you're a blended family or um, your children 
um, you're a single mom, single dad, and your children are going to be going without both parents. Um, both parents do need to sign the paperwork, so they will both need to be at the um, the appointment if you are you know, living together, you both can go, or you need to get that notarized form. Um, it's the form DS3053. That is the statement of consent form for minors for the passports. Also, you'll need the official passport justification request. Um, this is going to be those orders that we talked about or a um, memorandum in lieu of if that's something that you need because you have not received your official orders. You will also need to bring your military ID, um, whether that's a cat card or your dependent ID for any members that are over the age of 10, as well as you will need to bring, um, again, that social security card. That's not a citizenship thing, but we were told to bring that in our experience, um, we were able to take home those original documents. Um, we did not have to send them to the State Department with our applications. We were able to take them home. He made copies of them. Um, that is different than a leisure passport. With leisure passports, you will be expected to send that original birth certificate with your application. Uh, so that's one of the reasons I recommend doing the no fee first before you do that leisure passport simply because uh, you don't know when you're gonna get that original birth certificate back to start the next process. If you have a lot of time, you can do them in reverse, but I do recommend starting with that no fee passport first. One important thing to note is actually on the first part of the online passport application, it asks for the address, and the address is gonna be the DOD slash DET for line one. For line two, it's going to be the DMGN comma DOD slash DMGN. And it's gonna be City Washington, State DC, zip code 2006. Um, this is important because the address is not going to be your own address. It's to ask you if it is a permanent address, say no, and then put your current address um, underneath that. The rest of the form is self-explanatory. When it says, when it asks for money, just check the box um, that you're sending money, but it's a no fee passport. So it is literally no fee to us um, due to the fact that we're going on orders. Also, it's gonna ask you about dates um, when you're filling this form out. Make sure that your depart and return dates because it asks you if you have any upcoming travel and you do need to put your orders in there. Um, the dates on your orders, you're going to put that in the departure and return dates. Make sure they are exact because they can kick that out as they are getting a copy of your orders with this application. You will need to bring that those orders or a memorandum in lieu of orders. Um, I've talked about that, but these are important. If you don't have those, they will not process your application. Finally, this is loosely about passports, but kind of not. So if you're like us, we have a big family and now um, we have nine passports. We have five leisure, and for no fee, and of course my husband has his cat card for his um, no fee passport um, in place of that. So what are you gonna do with all of these when you're traveling? Because um, you may need um, your, both your no fee and your leisure passports if you are coming back into a country where the borders are shut down due to COVID, um, like only SOFA personnel is allowed to come and go or things like that. Well, I got this nice, wallet from um, Amazon. So it has slots enough for 10 passports and then we have our global entry cards here. Um, you have room to put your currency behind here, your local currency like yen. Um, and it does zip up nicely so that you can keep them all together because I have three kids and I know that um, if I left it up to them, they'd probably leave their passport um, in an airport somewhere and we're trying to avoid that. So um, I will hold them all until we get through, until we get to the TSA check line and then I will hand them or customs and then I will hand it to the children and then take them back and put them right away. So it's nice, it zips up and it has a nice little handle so you can just slide it right into your, um, 
your carry-on bag so that you have everything handy that you would need um, for a trip. And it's, um, I think it was $18, so it definitely wasn't expensive. And that's it. That's everything you need to know about your um, passports, your no-fee passports versus your leisure passports. And I hope um, I answered any questions you might have had about the process or why you need it, what the difference is. And if you have any other questions, feel free to drop them below and I will get um, answers to those questions. And I will also put a link to this right down below. So if you're interested in buying one of these, you can find it yourself on um, Amazon. So long from Semper Adventure.